what it do It's your boy Smiles man We in here with a first edition First episode of It's Go Time It's Go Time man Everybody just kind of introduce yourselves and Let everybody We're gonna start with uh, my brother Right here Yo what it do It's your boy Faree A.K.A. Boss Beard It's Go Time baby S.D. Booker The author of A Toast to the Men The founder of A Toast to the Men Network Alright Man, uh, first of all, um, it's go time. It's inspired, really, by my boy, Farik. Um Man, you know, he do his exercise thing. He do his thing uh, motivation-wise, you know. And me, of course, you know, uh, I'm all about motivation. I'm all about, you know, inspiring others, man. And uh, it was just special to me to do something with my boy, you know what I'm saying? Because... My boy been with me through some, you know, some dark times, you know, some good times, all that, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's a blessing, man, to see each other grow and become men. And, you know, and, you know, my my thing is we meant to inspire, you know what I'm saying? We here to elevate, we here to uplift, we here to push, man. And um, we got a special guest, you know what I'm saying? My boy Stacy wrote a whole book. Come on, man. Can we shout out that book, man? Yeah, it's yes, a yes, whole yes, book, yes. man. A toast to the man. Thank you. You know, brother. and uh I like connecting with people that's uh, you know, a little different. Cause everybody, you know, everybody not a rapper, everybody not a barber, everybody not a uh a, 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 a athlete, you know what I'm saying? I think everybody got something unique that they have with inside of themselves to be able to share. And you know what I'm saying Inspire the world So That's what we here for man We gonna get into this uh, First of all man uh, Since it's the first show For you man Come on man Come on Just say something To the people man <laughs> who, who are you Who is you <laughs> <laughs> Who is you Who is you I call myself the man man mm-hmm. I'm the man Go time It was inspired man I used to be 260 pounds and I just changed my whole entire life. I get up, I work out seven days a week. And every day I would get up, the first thing I tell myself is go time. Mm-hmm. And so it just kept ringing, kept ringing. It's go time. So anybody that's trying to get somewhere in life and become whatever they're trying to become, it's go time now. Don't wow. wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. It's go time now. So when my boy... Smalls hit me and said, bro, it's time to do a podcast. And he said, let's keep it so simple and so catchy. Mm-hmm. It's go time. And here we are. Our first episode is go time and more to come. Let's get it. Mm-hmm. Let's wow. get it, man. Wow. The man has spoken. There he is. You go see a lot of it, man. I'll tell you, you go enjoy <laughs> some of them call some people call Farid, some people call Muhammad, whatever you call him, this nigga still get money. So <laughs> you gonna enjoy this dude, man, for real. I, I promise you. I promise. I put that on my soul, you gonna enjoy. So Stacy, man. Yes. Uh where you from, man? How 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 did this, you know, uh let's get into your story a little bit, man. Let's you know, where, where, who are you? Where you from? Where you, you know, how you went on this whole journey to write a book? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You no, know, just that journey. Um, but let's start at the origin. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Your well, upbringing, your, you know. Right. Well, first off, man, I want to thank y'all for having me on. Man, I appreciate y'all. Man, this is huge. Uh, I'm humbled. And uh, this is huge, what, huge what y'all are doing. And that is go time. Man, when you said you you were two sixty, yeah. man, that moved me, man. Yeah. Man, yeah. that moved bro, me. We gonna have to get them pictures, bro. bro yeah. like, get them, I get them pictures, bro. Man, I can't even. I can't even fathom <laughs> that, man. No, no, really. I can't even fathom that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I can't even visualize that. So yeah. when you said that, I was like, wow, man, this brother here is bro, powerful. Speaking, this nigga inspired me to lose weight. This nigga got a brand. God, that is true. This is the first thing this nigga, this nigga come to the barbershop. I'm trying to support this nigga brand, man. I said, say, man, you know, let me get a shirt, man. I got you. And you I know, don't know him. He don't know him. But that nigga say, he looked at me, he said, brother, at this time, nigga, I'm like 298. Yeah. Wow. Damn, 300. How, man? What the? And, 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 and this nigga say, this nigga say, brother, 
You gotta lose some weight. I ain't got no shit for you. Yeah, I don't have nothing. You kept it real though. Yeah, yeah nigga, shit. But that's, you know, you gotta stick to your brand, whatever your brand wow. is. You know what I'm saying? Shit, you ain't got shit for big folk. You ain't got shit for big folk, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Stick yeah. to your brand. Like if yeah. a nigga wanna get cool, wanna get into shit. Yeah. Shit, I get into shit. Gotta tone it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we we speaking from. 2015, when I first met them, I come come through with the brand, the Boss Beer brand, mm-hmm. and I say what I said to him about, you know, I don't have nothing to fit you. And he and like 3X, I said, bro, I don't have nothing for you. Right. So we started 2015, him won a 2X. Here we are today, mm-hmm. 2022. Bro, give me a medium. Give yeah, me he, a ain't large. In, he ain't in no two X, y'all. Yeah. I said, damn, yeah, boy, yeah, you yeah. think you slam and trim like a bike <laughs> rim? Nah, I'm talking about nigga. All my shit gotta be tight on my body. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel that, man. My body. But yeah. uh, I'm a priest of man. I salute you, brothers. But uh, how did I get started, man? My origins, um, man. Grew up, raised, and grew up in Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove. Uh, I guess you can call it. Uh, in the city of, Greedy uh, Yeah it, They call it the Greedy Grove Greedy now. Grove they call it the inner city of Dallas Okay uh, We kind of An offshoot We're kind of alone by ourselves uh, There's a bridge separating us From South Dallas And Oak Cliff You know So we kind of Out there by ourselves uh, But uh, that's where I was raised man Went to Spruce High School Went to uh, Comstock Junior High EB e, uh, Not EB W.A. Blair uh, Elementary So I'm I'm in and out Grove, man. That's all I know. Um, But I've been a writer since birth, man, before before birth. That's what I'm born to do. I'm born to write. I'm born to uh, tell stories. That's what I'm here for. So you was on 466, right? You know it. You know it. You know it. You know it. So I'm here to tell stories, man. Uh, Telling stories or writing is a part of telling stories, uh-huh. but I'm also here to do it uh, audibly also, you know, do voice, uh, YouTube, podcasting, um, you know, just word of mouth. I'm here to tell stories, just not my story, but your story, your story, anybody's mm-hmm. story. I'm here to tell stories. Hold up. And I say that because from a young age, bro, uh, people were telling me their stories. Okay. I'm talking about, man, from the age. So you were them type of people that people just open up to and talk to. You know man, it's been like that. It's been like that. I guess my first girlfriend, 12, 11, telling me secrets, telling me family secrets, her story, me hearing a lot of stuff, perfect strangers telling me stuff throughout the years. So basically, you're a great listener. I'm a great listener. I'm a I'm an introvert yeah. by nature. Yeah. Okay. And now, if I get some alcohol in me, I will become an extrovert. Okay. <laughs> but, Pull this nigga up, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> by nature, man, I'm a I'm an introvert. I love to listen. I'm I'm engaged uh, in what people got to say, and people tell me like when I'm talking to you, it's like you looking. Like you, you really focus on me, but I am really focused on what you said to me. Yeah. I can repeat to you verbatim what you said to me. I'm listening. You know, I'm really listening to you, and uh, that's my gift. You know what I'm saying? I'm a good listener, and it's for me to tell these stories. And telling these stories, sometimes I'll change up the names mm-hmm. or just won't say the names because the names aren't important. Yeah, the it's story. the story that's important. The story. You know what I'm saying? It's the story that's important. Uh, and that's what I'm here for, man, to tell stories. So what was what's the story behind you even becoming, like, even starting to write? Like, mm-hmm. what's I, I'm pretty sure, growing up in Dallas, I'm pretty sure shit, you, you probably did and seen some egg yeah, goddamn thing. Right. So, like, right. along the way, like, what, what was you before? Like, what did you want to do before, you know what I'm saying, before you became a writer? Like, you know what I'm saying, what did you want to do? Right, right. Like, what was that moment where, like, damn, man, that's a, that's a great question, man. Uh, I'll be honest with you. At an early age, I wanted to be a writer. I, I was writing poetry okay. at an early age. Really, man. When we would have, I grew up in a church, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church in Pleasant Grove, right off of Elam, near Jim Miller. 
Holding us across from Pimpton Hill. Baptist. It matters. Southern Bay. Yeah, it matters. Okay. So what's Baptist. a Baptist Baptist? They yeah, got yeah, like yeah. Baptist. Yeah, Baptist yeah. Baptist. Sound like that's your stomach ground. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> like, church matters to me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like action. Yeah. 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 Personally, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Motherfucker yeah. running around shot and shit. That kind of like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So, so uh when they would uh, I'll give props to the to the Baptist church, to that church for this. They realized the gift in me. So when we would have events like Easter speeches or Christmas speeches, the other kids would have to get a speech from them and follow. They would allow me to create my own speech. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They that's recognized like, that in me. And this at an early age. This at a, I mean, this is eight, nine years old, bro. They would allow me to create my own poem, my own speech, whatever I wanted to create. The other kids had to, had to follow or, or recite what they gave them, but they allowed me to write my own speech. Okay. Yeah. That's and dope. so they noticed that talent in me at an early age. Wow. Yeah. So, so knowing that you grew up, they say in the neighborhood, but we say in the hood, hood. in the hood, hood. With knowing that you grew up in the hood, how did you stay focused on writing when knowing that you have Game bangers right here. You mm-hmm. got people selling drugs right here. You got mm-hmm. prostituting going on. Like, how did you stay focused and say, I'm just going to be a writer? That's a good I'm not going to do what I see everything. And that's not to say that mm-hmm. you didn't get into that, but how did you stay focused when seeing everything right in front of you and say, no, this is the right I'm going to go? Because I'm asking this question because, like, a writer, when we think of a writer, mm-hmm. us as blacks, we mm-hmm. said that's some square shit. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because we so used to people game banging and selling drugs. How did you stay focused on your task? Well, that's a great question. But I did stay focused. <laughs> I did stay focused. Okay. Now I never got into game banging, but I, I, I got into uh uh some criminality stuff, uh some robbing. Uh I can't tell no lie because people watching this like now nah, book. No, you didn't. So I'm keeping it real. I got into that. I never got into gang banging. Got into some drug dealing. He was jack boy. Got, yeah, got into some jack. Yeah, yeah, got, it, yeah got, it, got, it, got into all that. So I didn't, I didn't stay, yeah. I did I didn't stay focused. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? I didn't stay focused yeah. at all. Uh I was hustling, you know, uh got into some trouble, had to do a little time, you know, nothing major, about nine months. Nothing major. Um, and then, you know, just drift away from my gift. Drifted away. And now I'm trying to survive. Now I got a, a, a wife. I got a kid at 19. So now you ain't thinking about writing. Yeah. You don't think writing can make you no money. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. So you just, you just doing what you got to do. <laughs> me, person- yeah. me personally, because I-, I got a question. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I'm going to cut y'all. But me personally, when I drifted, I was searching. Mm. That's what, what we saying? are. That's what we all do. I was searching. Yeah, like, I was searching too. Like, okay. Yeah, I was searching yeah, too. Cause I, uh, yeah, because so. I, yeah, yeah, I was searching too. Uh, and I think as men, sometimes when we don't like have a like a good example, or you know, what I'm saying like it's something inside a nigga. Like he want to look up. He want to feel like you know what I'm saying. Like. If you ain't got that at the home, at the crib, you finna go out to the streets. I'm sorry. You right. finna go church. Wherever you finna go, you finna look for this image of yourself, goddammit, that you wanna be. Well, you wanna be a man. Yeah. yeah. And, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day. But what does a man look like? Listen, man, you could take a brother that don't bro, you could take a brother that don't don't work, that ain't got no hustle. Say, man, if you disrespect that man, he'll kill you. So is that a man? He want to be a man, though. I ain't saying he a man. Uh huh. But it's in him to want to be respected. Yeah. To want to be a man. He mm-hmm. just off path. Yeah. And he don't know how to get there. But he still want to be a man. No doubt. So that's in all of us to want to be respected. No doubt. And want to be a man, want to provide, protect. That's inherently in, in us. Well, you know, I think it also starts from our fathers because I grew up with both parents, mom and dad in the house and they still married today. Yeah, that's a and, blessing. Um, thank you. And so like, just say my dad is there. Well, ain't no just say my dad, my dad is there in the house. Mm-hmm. 
But what if my dad never told me his background? Mm. That's why us as little boys, we searching for ourselves because my dad uh, got away from the hood and started making money and separated the family from it so he didn't see it. Right. So then I start acting up and start acting out in school. And I want to know why am I acting up? Because my dad never explained to me wow. that he was the same kid. See your DNA. So it was already inside. It's already me. inside of you. But if he told me this as a kid, right. I wouldn't be having to do these little mischievous things or do this. But he was trying to protect you. Yeah. Now I'm not saying he, well, protect he was trying, he was trying to he he did the best. He went the best route he thought. Yeah. Oh, he did a great yeah, job. Yeah, he did yeah, a great job. Yeah. But I'm just teaching us, like, as men now, yeah. we have to explain to our kids. I was there. Well, we got to separate Superman from Clark Kent. We, we only show Superman. Right. But we right. never show Clark Kent. Hey, man. It comes from somewhere. So we yeah. have to explain that to them. So yeah. we don't have them out there in the world trying to figure out, I wonder why am I doing what I'm doing? Because you're a part of me. You're part of me. It's this is DNA. what I did. It's the yeah. DNA. Yeah. So and, and, wrong and, with you. And, 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 and this is the thing. And that's, I'm talking about, this is the weird thing about, well, not the weird thing, but the, 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 the beautiful thing about it is, I don't know what your dad did when he was out there, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say, Let's say he was a manipulator, whatever he did, a hustler, whatever, you know. Uh, arbitrarily, a hustler is not a bad thing. Arbitrarily, a manipulator is not a bad thing. When you think manipulator, you automatically think that's a bad thing, but no, it's not. Yeah. If it's rooted in righteousness. No doubt. It's all about how you channel it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all about. I had to explain to somebody about the word manipulator. And they were like, man, that's a bad thing. I said, no, not necessarily. I said, so when you have a newborn, not a newborn, let's say a three month old, mm -hmm. and you want them to eat these bitter peas, <laughs> right? Go ahead, I'm following you. puree, bitter peas, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't want to eat it. So what do we do? We mix, you got kids? Yeah, I got actually well, got so what did you do? Well, so what did you do? I'm going I'm going to mix some fruit or something uh -huh. something sweet right just so I can get them to eat what's in And you're going to mix it with the peas or what the squash yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, I'm going to mix it together. That's manipulation. Yes. But it's rooted in what? Good intent. Good intent. Good intent. But you are manipulating. Yeah. Because all I <laughs> yeah. want you to do is yeah. to eat yeah. what's healthy. Yes. Yes. So that's the thing we have to channel if you're a drug dealer, if you're a robber, if oh, you're yeah, a shout pimp, out to the philosophy, if you, whatever, yes, if you, what you whatever on that dark side, in the dark side, that's a whole nother topic because that ain't arbitrarily wrong either. It's like sometimes you got to tap into that dark side, but it's all about how you challenge it. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Because that dark side, and, I, and I'm ain't gonna go deep into it, but that dark side come in handy sometimes rooted in righteousness because. You got to have some killing you. So tell me, somebody busted this room with, with, with something, man. Something in you, that darkness in you, got to be able to come out. Well, we call that awareness, being aware. Yeah. Because the average yeah. person, we in here doing a podcast and talking, but I'm paying attention to what's going on at the door. Exactly. I'm not even by the door. Exactly. I'm just aware. But if you want to protect <laughs> yourself, mm -hmm. You gotta tap into that dark. So that's a whole nother thing. No doubt. Yeah, no that's doubt. a whole nother thing. Okay, that is. And yeah, I wanna yeah, bring I don't wanna get off topic. I wanna get off topic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't get off topic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how it go. Yeah. And like I was saying, like some people get off track for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But life is full circle. Mm -hmm. Life bring you back to your childhood for some reason to me. Like when you really begin to dig in yourself, like what do you really want? You know what I'm saying? What is your real you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 like, what is your real purpose? Like, what do you really want out of life? You know what I'm saying? Me, right. for one thing, I always wanted out of life was freedom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But life always brings you back full circle. So you got off track from being a writer. Mm -hmm. What moment brought you back? Brought me back. So... Uh, it was always in my mind, I want to get back to writing. I got into IT in 2001. I got into IT. I was with the woman at the time. I was married to the woman at the time. We divorced, but 
I said, I'm going to get into IT. Me and her were hustling. I met her hustling. We were hustling. And I was working also. Uh, but we was hustling too. And I said, you know, we had our first child. And I said, uh, I'm going to get into IT. This is 96. She's like, you don't know nothing about computers. You ain't going to be good at that. And in my mind, I said, like, yeah, you ain't going to last long. Like, yeah. it, it, it's about to come to an end. You can't talk down on me like that. Like, it's about to come to an end. You can't move with me. So we ended up breaking up. A guy into IT, man, went to a technical school, two-year technical school. Man, worked my way up, worked my way up. And just, just fast forward, in 2016, uh, May 5th, I got a call that my son had gotten killed. You know what I'm saying? He got murdered uh, trying to rob a car. Now, that goes back to... <laughs> huh? Okay. Huh? Huh? Okay. <laughs> now, I'm far removed from that. Yeah. Right? But it's in his DNA. No doubt. And what scene you got to come out of He you. tried to... Him and his cousin tried to burglarize... or well, steal a car. Silent alarm went off. The owner came out. Uh, shot both of them. His, uh, he, my son died. Cousin survived. Uh... He didn't know nothing about that with me. Going back to what you said. We keep it hidden. Right? So, at the same time, I'm going through a custody battle with my ex-wife. Uh, I win the custody battle. But then she filed a charge against me. I disciplined my son. And then I get a criminal case. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going through criminal court. Uh, they try to get me with a felony. Fast forward, they end up beating it. But anyway, I'm going through all this. And man, I'm about to snap. And I said, I got a release. I got a high because. Yeah, I got a release, man. And uh, I said, I need to write. I need to write. I need to release. And so I started writing. And I told myself, I said, you know, I'm not going to write from a perspective of pity or woe is me. I'm going to write from a perspective of how I got to this point, the mistakes I made, the choices I made. Mm -hmm. And that's how I wrote it. And then it started branching out. I said, you know what? I'm not the only one going through this. There's other men going through this. And it just kind of broadened. And I said, you know, I'm going to give these brothers. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. I'm going to preach to brothers. I'm not just going to give them wisdom, but I'm going to celebrate them too. And show them what they could be and where I come from and where I could have been and what they could be. And uh, I say, man, I'm going to title this a toast to the man. I'm not coddling. I'm not sugarcoating. I'm not doing any of that. I'm not badgering. Uh, but it's going to be straight talk from all perspectives. But I'm going to share a lot about myself and be transparent. And it, it titled a toast to the man. I just start writing. And... Uh, this this what came out, bro. And I got people from Africa, Sweden, uh, Scotland that got in this book, man. Uh, women, yeah. women, my number one uh, demographic, bro. Believe so, it or not, so you're across the globe, across the globe, bro. And I never expected it. I was just trying to release initially. I was just trying not to snap. So what made you? What made you decide to, in that dark hour, if we gonna call it a dark hour, it was in that moment, like what 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 flipped the switch on and been like, you know, I ain't finna, ain't no pity party here. How did you stay focused and just say, man, I'm finna write this and and I hope I'm able to reach everybody else. Man, I don't know. I don't know if it was a premonition or or the universe, or God speaking to me. Some click and said, "Man, it's bigger than you. Mm. You ain't you ain't the only one. Man, it's people been through worse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you lost your son, and some clicked yeah. to you and said, "It's people that been through worse." Yeah, but they have. I know, damn. Yeah, they have though. That's that's they some have. shit. They that's have. some shit there. Yeah, man, I get emotional. <coughs> I get emotional. Now. I can tell. I can, yeah, I can yeah. Tell. But uh, they have. You know what I'm saying? 
Damn. Yeah, so I had to... Man, you got to get out of yourself. You really got to get out of yourself, man. And you got to love the people. You just got to love the people, bro. And like I said, I'm an introvert by nature. But I do love people. And... I just wanted to help people. It's bigger than me, bro. Okay. It's bigger than me. Cool. Yeah. Struggle. Mm -hmm. During the process of writing a book, I'm sure it was struggles. I'm sure somebody, like, nigga, you finna, nigga, come on, write a book, nigga. You ain't finna make no money writing no goddamn book. Like, I'm yeah. sure of that shit. Like, yeah. what was that? Like, like the process of the Fucking writing a book. Yeah, man. well, I didn't get, I didn't face the, you ain't gonna make no money writing a book. I was already making decent money. You know, I'm at IT, I was in IT, so I'm making decent money. It wasn't really about the money. It wasn't about the money at all. I ain't gonna say it really. It wasn't about the money at all. Uh, I was just trying to, it was therapy for me, bro. Yeah. And then I went to help other men. But I did have people say, so what I would do to keep myself in check and keep myself accountable. I will put out an excerpt of the book before I finished it. I will put out an excerpt of it every Wednesday on Facebook. I'm sorry, what's an excerpt? A uh, 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 two, three, four lines. Okay. Yeah, a clip. Two, okay. Yeah, a clip. Two, three, four lines of the book. Some meaty stuff to get the people engaged. Okay. It's like, damn, this important. I want more of this. Yeah. So I will do that. Every Wednesday, on time, consistently, at a certain time, I think it was 2 p.m., on Facebook. Before you dropped the book. Before I dropped the book. A year before I dropped the book. I did it every week for 52 weeks. And people were engaged. And one time, I was two hours late, and a brother hit me up. It's like, man, what's up with the excerpt? Mm. I said, ah. God, 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 now, okay, they paying it, but they used to come in and like, so I knew people was following, but when he did that, I said, oh, man, he's like, man, I look forward to this, bro, I said, mm. oh, okay, damn, it's real, yeah, why was you late, it's, huh, why was you late, I don't know. <laughs> I can't even tell you, bro. I don't but even that know. Brother gave I don't you know. Me. I don't know. I don't he, know. He, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know, man. But um, he 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 answered kind of yeah. answered the And I know he probably listening. He gonna see this. Antonio Chambers went to school with him. It was you, brother. Yeah. But uh What did you keep saying what yeah. did that do for you? Man, like, what just, did that do it, for it, the purpose? It, it gave me it gave me motivation, inspiration, validation. Okay. That I was on the right track. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was on the right track. I was doing the right thing. It was bigger than me. Man, it's, it, okay, this is a mission. This is a purpose. Damn. This is bigger than me, bro. Like, this this touching people. Right? So I did have a homeboy. I won't say his name. I won't say a name if it's in a negative aspect. I'll say your name if it's in a positive aspect. So I said, Antonio, Antonio Chambers is positive. I won't say your name if it's negative. So I did have a brother, and he probably watching this, but I won't say his name because it's negative. When I was putting, when I said, when I said a date, I told the people the book is coming out this date, but I did it to keep myself accountable. Mm -hmm. Because if nobody knows a tree fell in the forest, did it really fall? Uh -huh. <laughs> so if nobody knows you working on something, you can make them like, oh, shit, well, I give up. Yeah. I don't have to do this because no, you ain't held accountable. No doubt. And it's hard to hold ourselves accountable. But when people are looking at us and depending on us and holding us accountable, man, you said you was going to do this. There's something in you like, man, as a man, I got to stand on that. Yeah. But if nobody knows, <laughs> man, we'll yeah. just we'll let that thing fall by the wayside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I had to do that. And he was like, bro, why would you give a date? Man, you don't know if you're going to uh, meet that date. Well, I, and I explained to him, I explained to y'all, this is why I did it, bro, to hold myself accountable because I know I don't want to look at, be looked at as a liar. Yeah. yeah. So I'm giving a date, and it's going to force me to meet that date. So during that process, did you have times where you said, man, the hell with it? It's oh, too yeah. Much. No, I didn't say it was too much. I had times where I didn't feel like writing, but I got in there. 
And once you get going, you, you, you get those juices. So what motivates you to get up and you was do already it even when you don't when you didn't want to do it? Like what made you say, man, I gotta get I got to write? Because I knew somebody needed this more than I needed to write it. Somebody needed to receive it more than I needed to write it. Man. Wow. Yeah. Somebody and I and I gotten those testimonies. I gotten those reviews. Okay. I gotten those reviews. I mean, I had a brother hit me up. On Instagram, and said, "Man, I hashtag something, looking for something else, and your book came up. Wow! And the cover got me, so I went to Amazon and got the book. Is it this cover? Yeah, that cover. This cover. And he's like, he's like, bro, I need that book, and he wasn't even looking for the book." (laughs) <laughs> he searched for a hashtag looking for something else. That's that's the thing. Hashtags are important. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, know, just, yeah. Just to pick on what you're saying, what you're looking for is looking for you too. It's looking for you too. Just make sure you're looking it's for energy. the right thing. It's yeah. energy. You just got to be ready to receive and yeah. put yourself in position. And you was right there. And it's right there. And what he was looking for. It's right there. <laughs> Anything I wanted, it's been right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anything I wanted, man, the way me and this brother met, it just is right there. It came together. I don't force nothing, man. I just, I go on my intuition. I, I follow my spirit. Uh, I accept things I can't control. Even in traffic, bro. Like, if I'm held up in traffic and whatever, I was like, it's not meant for me to be on time or whatever, and then you find out, hey man, that was a, a ten car wreck. Yeah. So do that come with <laughs> a fatality? Do that come how with wisdom been in that? or what? Huh? Do that come with wisdom or like how did you get to that point? It come, I, I, say, I say you can say wisdom, but coming with life and understanding, you gonna control what you can control, bro. Right on. And, Y'all heard it, and that that's and you got to release. Yeah. You got to release and. We, Some things we can control, I guess, but at the, in the big scheme of things, we have no control. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna ask this question right quick. And in this process, whether it was legal, and I'm trying to get into all that before mm-hmm. you know, time up, before rather legal, personal, one specific moment that stood out to you, but in writing this book, the damn they're broke and said, fuck it. I don't want to do this shit. Or oh, just one moment, it just, it was heavy. It was like, God damn, man. Well, let's you know, make you, it a two-part question. The question that you just asked, and what was something that say, this is it? I know for sure I'm doing the right thing. Actually, I can answer this and answer both questions in one answer. Okay. When I got to the drink, I call them drinks, chapters, law, love is law, uh, drink six, love is law. Bro, my, uh, we separated now. I got to keep it real. We separated now. But uh, my wife, I can't even say my wife at the time because we're still married. But uh, I was writing that chapter. I used to go in my daughter's room and write. And I was writing that chapter. And that's the longest chapter, the longest drink. I call them drinks. That's the longest drink in the book. Love is law. And I went so deep in that. It was an out-of-body experience. I went so spiritual with it. And I didn't even know where it came from. It's like I was in another world, bro. I was in another world. And I came out of that room and my wife looked at me and I was like, it scared me. Because I tapped into something and I'm just, just going. It just flooding out of me. I'm just going by love. And she's like, babe, I see some on you. Say, like, say you done aged, bro. I was in there about an hour. She said I aged, and I came 
out of there feeling like something, man, something took over me. Wow. It was spiritual. And everybody tell me that chapter, that drink is the most powerful one. Love is law. Love is law. Love is law. And none of this was premeditated. I didn't think of this stuff consciously. It was just flowing out of me, man. And she came and she saw what I saw. Like something, well, I didn't see myself, but she's like something. She said, I had, she said, I had grown gray hairs. Within this hour. Within this hour, bro. Swear to God. So my question to you, <laughs> love is law. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Love is law. It's spiritual law. I mean, I got to love you regardless, man. I got to see you as me. We're all connected. To hate you, regardless of what you do to me, is to hate myself. If we all part of the universe, we're all part of God. Somebody told me, it's like, man, we all gods, just broken up in different perspectives. I agree. That's you got your said. eyesight, you got your eyes, I got my perspective, he got his. We're all broken up, and we're bringing it back to the source, Well, the data we collected. And we're supposed to share this to everybody. But we all, you and me, mm-hmm. on you. So I, if I hate you, I hate myself. Now, do that mean we have to be in communion? No. no. Do that mean we got to be friends? No. It might be we on different phases in life, different platforms in life. We got different understanding of life right now, and we don't need to be around each other. Mm-hmm. We don't need being community. We don't need to be friends. And that goes for family too. Right? Right. But I can't hate you, man. I'm hating myself. I'm hating myself, man. To hate you is hate myself, no matter what you do to me. So I can't I mean, hate that, you. That, so I have to be able to forgive myself. I fear somebody that can't forgive, bro. I agree. But to an extent, here I am. Mm-hmm. I slap the cowboy shit out of you. Mm-hmm. And that's the most disrespectful thing you can do mm-hmm. to a man. Mm-hmm. How do you still love me. And I slapped the shit out of you with anger. I didn't slap you just to play. Mm-hmm. I slapped you with anger. I'm going to discipline you. But how do you love me? But I ain't got to piss on you. Hey, I could, I could, I, we, could, we could fight. But I ain't got to kick you your motherfucking teeth out. I ain't got to kill you. But I could, this is, we get an understanding. But from and where- then we go have a drink. But from where you come from, mm-hmm. the hood, mm-hmm. if you are being disrespected, mm-hmm. you handle it to the highest power. So if I so-called slap you, which I wouldn't because I'm a man, I ain't going to never disrespect a man. You're not just going to crack me back or no, you're going to try to punish me because that's the most disrespectful thing you can do to a man is slap him or spit on him. You're going to try to demolish me. How do you still love me in that moment? I want to say me. Everybody's different. I want to say me. We're going we're gonna to have an understanding. Yeah, I think it's like we're gonna mix it up. We're gonna no, we're gonna no, we're gonna mix it up. I think if it's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it like this. I think if it's like FJ, yeah, disrespecting you. Yeah, well, yeah, we're gonna, you we're gonna, gonna punish gonna, his ass. Yeah, yeah, I'm punish but you. You love him. Yes, I'm gonna punish you. I'm gonna but now we're gonna but see the thing is. The energy you talking about in the hood, he said that a, comes from. He said that's a dark place. You yeah, the, yeah, that come, but that comes from men raised by single mothers. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Come on, so that's, basically those are that's what they not, call bitch tendencies. Yes, Let's keep it real, bitch mate. Okay, but that's not principle stuff. Okay, you know what I'm saying? That's not principle stuff. So I give, I always give the analogy like. Even if you're my enemy, man, uh, and we mix it up, I believe in always leaving a man his dignity. That's that. And if I can't leave your dignity, I might as well kill you because you don't come back and try to kill me if I take your dignity. I can whoop your, you, you probably can take an ass whooping if I leave your dignity though. Like if I knock you out, it's fair square, one on one. 
You probably can take that. You might want your one-on-one back or whatever, right? But if you find out when you wake up and you find out, man, that nigga pulled out his penis and pitched in your face, that's a whole nother level, bro. Yeah. That's a whole... I I took your dignity, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's... that's <laughs> how do I come back from that? I'm laughing. Like, how do you come back from that, though? You can't, you can't. You can't. It's kind of... <laughs> see, see, I got to leave you your dignity. And, and men, only way you men come back raised from by it. men would teach you that. Yeah. The only it's way you principles come back from in that, fighting. You move out of state. You got to yes, move out of state. you got to move out of state. <laughs> I got to move out of state. Can't nobody know you. It's principles in yeah, fighting. No doubt. This is why if you watch the old westerns. You know what they call it, the 10-step, 12-step draw and, and hey... Don't shoot a man in his back and this, this it was principles. Yeah. You know, it was the principles in, in even in killing. Yeah. It was principles. So what age Indians, were you? Indians even killed in uh, like they would do it in an honorable way. No. You know what I'm saying? They would do it in an honorable way. Because death is important. Mm-hmm. Like that's nothing to be taken lightly. So it's what, principle. Age, what age were you when you started to see life on a whole different scale? To 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 be able to speak how you speak mm-hmm. now, because you have young kids, young teenagers that's gonna see this podcast, and they like, oh, that nigga full of shit. That nigga ain't thinking like that. Mm-hmm. But it comes with experience of life. What age were you when you like, damn, this is how life really is this is what i supposed to be doing versus this is what i thought i should have been doing right because as a kid you think like a kid and you act out as a kid and just because you become 50 or 60 or 40 Mm -hmm. you think you're an adult but you're not an adult you're still a kid so when did you say damn i'm a grown-up and i'm thinking like a grown-up because it's a difference right it is a difference and I grew up, man, I had a temper. I was known for fighting. I wasn't a bully, but I was known like like Book will he will defend himself, he will fight, but I wasn't a bully. Uh but I did, I would snap. And the reason I would snap and 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 punch first and swing first, man, I just didn't know how strong my chin was. Yeah. And I didn't want to <laughs> test it. <laughs> out of fear like I just gonna swing first if the if yeah. I know the heat is on yeah. I'm getting off first best thing hey, cause Why I don't wait? I don't wanna be knocked out I don't know how strong my chin is I'm getting off first when it's understood it, it, it's beef so so you wouldn't wait for nobody to knock the leaf off your shoulder no 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 when it's understood <laughs> it's understood but I had to get past that and when I realized I wasn't a killer uh, and many people watching this would know this is a true story. When I was in junior high, I was I was younger than everybody. I was twelve in junior high. The part of the grove I lived on was on one end of Jim Miller, and there was another end by Comstock, my 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 junior high on the other end of Pleasant Grove, and they were gang infested. And man, we had to walk from one end of Jim Miller to get to our junior high. And we didn't get along. But although some of the guys I played basketball with, Little League with, but anyway, one time walking home from school, trying to get back to the other side of the grove, back to my side from school, a gang of guys, they was gang, you know, they ganged up. Man, I was robbed. Broad daylight out of school, chain. Man, I need, need that. Gang of dudes, need that. 12 years old. <laughs> so is that is that what inspired you to be a robber? No. That didn't inspire me. I think hunger inspired me. Desperation. I never did it to be cool or nothing. Desperation. But this one let me know I wasn't uh my heart was 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 wanted to be pure. Wanted to be pure. I never saw that guy. He he didn't go to the school. They would just hang. They were older than us. They would just hang out by the school and, and jack dudes from starter jackets and chains and shoes, whatever, right? Okay. But they were older than us. They didn't go to the school. Four or five years later, I'm hustling now. I see this guy 
at a at a at a house party in the backyard. He don't even know me, cause he probably didn't rob so many people. I'm sure. just somebody. You remember I, that face? I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because that's the only person who robbed me. So I remember him, but he probably didn't rob many people. So he don't remember me. So I saw him. I said, whoa. I tell my boy, we packing. We, 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 we do, we hustling. I said, man, that's the old boy that robbed me back in junior high. He said, man, I got the gauge and, and trunk. Like, what you want to do? And right then, I said, nah, I'm good. Then let me know. I'm not that dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that dude. But did hustling, getting money have something to do with that in the moment? Because, like, when you're hustling. Man, when you violated, she he violated me, bro. But a violation the, is a violation. But at the same time, we're talking about like when you was a kid versus you transition your life. I'm getting money now. Mm-hmm. I'm getting money and I don't need no problems. That shit happened as a kid. Like I'm, I'm not thinking about money. that like that at 16. At 16 years old, I'm not thinking about it like that. I'm not thinking about it. And now, if I was 30, maybe, I would think like that. I'm getting money. I ain't got time for that. that was but me. I was 16. At 16. <laughs> yeah, I was 16. Or, or younger. Yeah, young. Yeah. yeah, but it was about four, four or five years old later. Yeah, and uh, I just knew I didn't want to kill him. I'm not a killer. Yeah. Now, will I kill? I think anybody will kill if you no. if you have to. Yeah, but like a cold blooded killer, I knew that wasn't me. At that, right then, I said that's not me, and I felt more empowered knowing I could have. He didn't even know I could have took taken his life. His life was in my hand. Because hmm. I knew who he was, but yeah, he didn't know who I was. Yeah, His yeah. life was in my hands. That was enough for me. Mm. Yeah. Sweet girl. Yeah, that was enough. I was good, man. I was well, good. Hey, thank God for the change. Yeah, thank, thank God, God for, for the change. change. Thank God for the change. Here bro. I am. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm no <laughs> angel, man. I, I had not done everything right, bro. Um, I think for the most part, for the most part, I meant well, uh, but sometimes, a lot of times, not sometimes, a lot of times, I intentionally did wrong and said, I suffer the consequences. Yeah. This is what I want. I, I, think, I think, me personally, I think that's just, at the moment, upbringing, understanding, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, when you know more, you know, you well, do, you need to understand yeah, that you do better. You're supposed yeah, to do better. Yeah, yeah. Like, lack yeah. of knowledge, lack of understanding. Yeah. Like, we're not, you know, we're all. Yeah, blank out. You know what I'm saying, but I just think, you know, I don't, I don't think like a lot of times you hold people to some shit or people hold themselves to some shit. Like motherfuckers really like hold themselves accountable for some shit they done when nigga you didn't know shit at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying. Your understanding was zero at the time. Right. Like. Right. How can you really? I believe motherfuckers. <laughs> If you not a riding motherfucker, like mm-hmm. you got some motherfuckers just riding, no, I can't. No, explain you got it. some demons out here. But bro. yeah, but if you're a, a decent person, like you make decisions based on your lack of not right. based on your knowledge and understanding. Yeah, and shit. If you did some shit and you yeah. didn't know a lot of shit, then hell, yeah. I can't hold you accountable for that. Well, they, you know, they say they say the brain is not fully developed until like twenty five. I believe that. I, and I believe that. Yeah, I can <laughs> yeah. say thirty. I can argue thirty. Yeah, yeah. I can argue thirty. But Cause so when you said I made the rational decision, like I got money coming, I ain't got. The, nah, I, I wasn't thinking like that. At Sixteen, bro. It just nah, nah. At thirty, maybe I would have thought like that, but no, nah, I wasn't thinking like but that. But that was the moment that let you know that hey, I'm, I'm not built like that. Not I'm I'm different. Yeah, I'm, you know di- I'm, I'm different. I'm yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not. I I'm not no cold blooded. Because like I, that, I, 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 I believe that two motherfuckers can be raised in the same household, but their mindset is different. Mm-hmm. One is on a totally different level than the other, but you you brought up in the same shit. Right. I just can't explain it, but motherfucker, you were chosen. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? It just went in your car, so it wasn't. Well, yeah, like, bro, I did a lot. I did some stuff, man. And uh, brothers got killed that I knew did the same things I did. Went to jail, went to penitentiary, same things I did. And uh, I did a nine month stint, but avoided a felony. Just good lawyer, just, you know, um, what they call it? Uh, uh, when you did three for one, uh, yeah. you know, did that. Uh, but because it was an unaggravated case, but it was a dope case. But I did a lot of stuff a lot of people did. But it just went in my cards. Yeah. It just went in my cards. And I can't even take credit for it. It just wasn't in my cards, man. Right. And uh, I'm supposed to be here to tell the story, to motivate and inspire. So, yeah. And then we need to, we don't got to, like, yeah, let's get back to, like, um, that process. Mm -hmm. Like, so when you dropped a book, legally, mm -hmm. was you where you needed to be with the book? Like, I'm talking about like set up like if a, if a motherfucker dropping a book like okay you done gave a strategy you mm -hmm. when you talked about the in, inserts you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying on Facebook right. hyping that shit up getting right. a motherfucker ready for it so now you dropping the book like what is okay you got the product you got the creative part mm -hmm. what is some of the legal shit that you need to establish you know what I'm saying if I if I feel like I'm finna drop some shit so so this is the thing well, we're going to take it back a little bit. So when creating the book, I researched, I Googled, what were the measurements of the book, the pages? Because okay. I, I constructed this all myself. So I get the measurements. I can't memorize them now. But I got I Googled all that. What are the measurements to make this into an e-book, to make this into a paperback? What are the measurements? All this. I Googled that. Got that together. Now, on the business side, I created my business name. Okay, got my EIN, What's my your tax ID, name? uh Gramlin Grove Publishing. My wife, still my wife, we separated, still my wife. She's from Gramlin, Louisiana. I'm from the Grove, Gramlin Grove Gramlin Publishing. Grove there Publishing. you go. Okay. She did the editing. Okay. Yeah, she did the editing. Uh so Gramlin Grove Publishing. We did that, got the EIN, we did the certificate of formation. I'm giving y'all some game now. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. That's three hundred dollars. Okay. We <laughs> set on, it up. We shit, set yeah. it up. We set it up as a corporation, S corp. You got C corp. You got S corp. You got sole proprietor. You got uh, you know, uh, LLC, whatever. But we set it up as an S corp for different reasons. That's too long to go into. You got to do your research. But we set it up as an S corp, right? I understand so you pay yourself, right? Huh? So you pay yes, yourself. pay yourself. Yeah, I'm my own. I'm my own. I'm my yeah. own employee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I pay myself. So what we did from there, I'm giving y'all the whole spiel. Man. I'll tell you, that's what I'm about, well, man. Come well, on, yeah. well, we did, this is well, what I've been waiting on. Yeah, the money. Well, we, well, we, what we yeah, did man. from there to get funding to do all this, we uh we got the bank account. We started a bank account, a business bank account. Now at the time, our credit was decent. Our credit was decent. Both our credits over 700. I paid a cat to take care of our credit. We did that, but you can do it yourself. Uh, paid a cat. We, our credit, personal credit is over 700. Got a business account. We started getting, uh, trade lines, uh, through Office Depot, uh, Staples. Get those going. You know, we might, we got a printer. So that's a trade line. We got credit going with our business account, right? Now, let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. When you did you did that automatically happen when you got your S Corp or it was some pro it was a process? No, our credit was straight. We got the okay. we got the business account and we it was so applied. So we went to we went straight to office uh depot. So when you start your business, yeah. your personal credit kind of aligns with your business yeah. credit. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna check your personal credit first. Bet. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. They're gonna check your personal credit that's first. Game. And your personal credit don't have to be great. Ours were, was great, but it don't got to be great, man. Right. Five forty, six hundred. It ain't got to be great, right. but ours was great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, so we did that. We got uh, start building the credit. Got credit cards. You know what I'm saying? Got credit cards. Did the whole thing. Got a loan, and 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 we just start pulling money in through the business. Business got gas cards through the business, everything through the business, everything through the business, bro. 
And the money just started coming in. I funded the book. Funded the book. Paid everybody through the business. Paid everybody through the business. And I got it. My boy going to listen to this. I grew up with him. Mark Ponce. <laughs> He's called me TJ Hooker. <laughs> Those are my name. Booker. He yeah. me too. Grew up with him. He gave me the game. He said, uh, one time. I think that's ironic. Your last name Booker. Yeah, hmm. right. <laughs> but that, that's just a moment. He gave me the game. He said, psychedelic ass we, we, went, we were at uh, a picnic, a spruce picnic, alumni picnic. And he said, TJ Hooker, I know you be seeing me on Facebook with this hoopty. This is this. He said, man, I just, this is what I do, you know, on Facebook. Said, Come check this out, what I got. He showed me a big body beans. He said, on paper, my social security number, I'm broke. I can get welfare. He said, my business account, I'm rich. And he just started teaching me the game. He lived off his business name, off his business account. But his wow. social security number is broke than a motherfucker. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he broke on his So If you look at his social, he broke. But he lived off his business. Like, got a bunch of real, real, uh, real estate and uh, we're doing his thing, man. So he learned how to capitalize off that. Uh, and people have been game. doing it for decades, centuries, yeah. man. We just learned a lot. Not all of us. Uh, some of us ain't gave the game back. What's one key 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 thing in that that you think a motherfucker should know? Like the key thing is, there's a few things, man. Uh, get you if you ain't got a man. I don't want to alienate nobody, uh, but I'm just talking about for me, man. Get you a down woman, man. This is me speaking as a heterosexual man, but I, I deal with the other community too on business too. But it's me. Get you a down woman. Somebody on your team, surround yourself with down dudes that's down, that's on the same path you on. Man, y'all stay focused. Stay focused. And believe in each other. And understand that forget the social security number thing. Deal with things on your business name, on that EIN, and just be on the up and up. And man, y'all, y'all come together like Voltron. And do your thing. Mm -hmm. Do your thing, man. For real. And I was able to do that with my wife. We said, I, I got to keep it real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We said, I, I was able to do that. So I know it works. But it sounds like y'all still able to talk. Y'all still man. on the business level? Or nah, still, nah, we ain't man. even on that, man. We ain't even on that. Man, you know, can keep the money flowing. Nah, nah we ain't even Damn, on that. Man. But everything going to be cool, man. But yeah, um, man. sometimes it work out like that, man. But I know it works. Yeah. I know yeah. it works. So in I know for a fact. So I'm dropping that motherfucker, man. So you you, you created the company. You published mm -hmm. it yourself. Mm -hmm. What was the benefit of that? Freedom, going man. Through what you company. always talk about, freedom. Okay, I'm about freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Listen, freedom man. I've had I've had people I've had people companies approach me to want to buy the rights to my book and say we'll give you the X number of dollars for the rights and we'll give you this man a bag, bro. So you what the right word called independent? <laughs> say, bro. I could I could listen, man. And I'm not saying. I won't do it with other books. I ain't gonna say that. But this man, your baby. This is my baby. This man, you hit this it. man got his <laughs> This is my company, baby. Man. This is my baby though. Yeah. And I couldn't I couldn't see myself, man, just giving over my sweat. This is pain, bro. I'm and this I'm talking about my son that got killed, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about the struggles, bro, for a whole year. I was laying on my all my bills, bro. Going through court cases, I was late on every bill, bro. I was late on my rent, my bills, my car. Everything was late for a whole year, bro. Every I month. talk about that it, in not, this. Not just late, but every month. Every, every month. month late. Every month late. I talk about it. That's why when you ask me, what can we talk about, I, bro? <laughs> talk about anything. It's in the book. It's in the book. We can talk about book. anything, but I got nothing to hide. Hey, y'all, good plan. Go get it. <laughs> A toast to the man. So I couldn't see myself taking some money, man. And like I said, disclaimer, on this book, <laughs> I couldn't see myself taking some money. 
and just selling my soul, sweating tears, my pain. This it's pain, bro. Pain, bro. So on another it's note, what good. you know that the pain that you have in this book and the money that these other people want to give you, mm-hmm. how do you find yourself going extra hard to make sure this book become one of the best sellers in the world? Because somebody else already believed in you. Mm-hmm. What do you take from yourself and say, man, I'm going to do whatever it takes to put my book where they see my book supposed to be? Well, I couldn't worry about that. You say something very important, man. And I did my research on that. You said bestseller. So I did, I did want that at first. I did my research on bestseller. And y'all do y'all research yourself. Don't believe what I say. Do your own research. So bestseller is a lot. It's political game to be on that bestseller list. It's a, that. It's a political game. I agree that. It ain't what you think. It ain't what that. you think, bro. A lot of times they buy those books. The publishing companies, the big dogs, buy those books in bulk. And that'll put you on the bestseller list because you got to have so many books. But then you in the red. Like you you owe that money back. It's like a loan. But you're on the bestseller list. But you ain't really sold that many books, actually. It's like the record company. Yeah. Right? It's like the record company, but you ain't really sold that many books. It's a political game. I said, oh, no, I can't do that. Y- y'all research it yourself. Don't listen to me. Okay, but man. No, no but bad. I said, I don't, yeah. I don't want it that bad. I don't want it that bad. So if I ain't got it, if I ain't on it, I ain't on it. But doing doing things like this with y'all, that's going to get me whatever I'm supposed to get. That's all I want. I don't want nothing less. I don't want nothing more. Just give me what I'm supposed to get. So I'm good. I'm good. Whatever, bro. Like, I'm good with whatever I'm supposed to get. But I'm going to put my best foot forward. I'm going to build the relationships with people who want to build with me. And however it ends up, that's how it ends up. Respect. So with your blood, sweat, and tears being in this book, for a young man that's coming up mm. trying to identify themselves, or a young, what's that older black guy that's going through relationship problems or whatever he's going through in life, what's in this book you want them to learn from this book? Or what, what are you wanting us to learn from your book? Don't take life too serious. Uh, mm. <laughs> be be uh, take life as a precious jewel, but understand that you gotta enjoy life. Relax. Life is a school. I believe it's a school for learning and teaching, and sometimes you do that simultaneously. And uh, just enjoy it, man. What you think, and we all, we've all been there, I'm sure. Uh, ten years ago, we probably experienced something, man. We thought this was the most tragic thing. This was the most terrible thing. And you look back, it's like, man, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're in the moment, uh-huh. it's the most, it's the, it's the worst thing, right? And we spoke about that before. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Because sometimes. And, yeah. When you going through some shit, nigga, in your mind, you thinking, oh my God, this shit is about to be yeah. fucking retarded. But like, but yeah. it's never. It's never what if as I bad can get if I can just tell a motherfucker anything in life, nigga, it's never as worse as it is in your mind. But that's never. hard. That's hard to deliver to somebody because they going through it real time. And you going, th- you you talking to them in retrospect. I'm, I'm gonna ask you to trust. Yeah, me. <laughs> but that's I'm, tough. I'm gonna ask you just just that's trust tough, me. Though. That's tough. That's tough. The shit is never. <laughs> but but that's a great thing because when you think the worst of the worst in your head, it's gonna happen. And no, no, no. When you think the worst of the worst in your head, and then you go through the process, you're like, damn. I thought I was going to lose my life if I didn't make this shit happen. Right. This is the worst of the worst right Right. here. I thought I was going to lose my life. It's never, it's never, it's never. In my lifetime, man, and it's just our experiences and whatever, it's never as worse as I thought it was going to be. Right. Right. You put that pressure on yourself, man. It's never, dog. I I always try to remember. Relax, my nigga. I always try to remember the, the adage, uh, I don't know if it's a script or an adage. Uh, this too shall pass. 
This too shall pass, man. Like, bro. Like, listen, man. We proven, like, we survivors. Like, we've been through some stuff. I don't know everything y'all been through, but we here. No doubt. We here, though. So that proves that we survive. Yeah, man. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? We survive. I know that for a fact. I ain't got to know y'all's story. I know that you survive because we're here. Because we're here. Yeah. So let's keep pushing, man. That's why I tell anybody, man, could keep pushing. Uh, have an F you attitude at times. You got to look yourself in the mirror sometimes because you're your own self could be your worst enemy. You got to look yourself in the mirror sometimes and say, F you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Yeah. I can do this. I will do this. Yeah. I've done that. Look myself in the mirror because I'm down on myself. I'm talking down on myself. We think haters be outside of us. We're our worst hater. Yeah. And you got to say, man, F you. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. doing this against the odds. It's it's funny you speak on saying F you because outside of saying F you mm-hmm. to yourself sometimes, sometimes you have to say to yourself, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. It's not about what I went through, what I was taught, because as you get older as an individual, you got to start to say, hey, it's not how I was raised. Mm-hmm. It's not what I was taught. It's about what it's supposed to be. Yes. And I'm speaking on that because, you know, just um, going on to your YouTube, you know, you talked about love and respect. Mm-hmm. And love and respect, you was pretty much saying how women want more of the love and men wants the respect. Yes. But if we bag it up just a little bit, for both of them, love and respect, it's hard for you as a man to want respect from a woman mm-hmm. and it's hard for a woman to want love from a man if you don't love yourself if you don't respect yourself it starts with self first in order to receive it from someone else there you go you can't give something you don't have for yourself man. so that's why it's hard to respect right. that's why it's hard to love right. because you don't love thyself you don't because you don't yourself, know thyself you don't know thyself so that's- once you figure out who you are then love becomes easy. Yes. Then respects become easy yes. because you know who you are as a human. Right. So you know what to expect. Right. But if you go in the door just saying like, Chris, that's my nigga. Right. He's supposed to bring me into the podcast. I knew I was the truth before a podcast. They don't make you. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So if, when you know who you are, it's like, this is what it's supposed to be. I know yes. for sure this is what it's supposed to be. Yes. But if you don't know what it's supposed to be, you accept anything. Accept anything, bro. And you'll do anything to yeah. somebody, too. Yeah. You got to know yourself. And I and that's why I come back to, I have to be able to love you regardless. I got to see you as me. No doubt. That don't mean we got to kick it. We ain't got to have no relationship, bro, because we, we in two different places. You know what I'm saying? We're not supposed to commingle with everybody, man, because we're in two different places. That don't mean I can't love you. That means to show you the respect and love I would show myself. No doubt. But we ain't in a place we can kick it together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I can love you from afar, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. okay. Yeah, so... Uh... I toast to the man. <clears throat> um, so you pretty much dolomite this thing. I did, man. I did. Everything independent. I hired everybody. Man. So is there like... I know like pretty So like in... Um, I had to, you know, toast to the men, get ready clothes. I had to get toast shit to the together. Man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, uh, what's that process? Do you need distributors? Oh, you you did your artwork? Like, I did all that. I hired, I hired my photographer, my boy Anthony. He did the photography. We did it right at Cars uh, Carousel. They're closed down now. This is my hand. 
This is my boy Tito Hand. This is Bruce Hand. Q Hand. This is Scott Hand. Scott was the owner of Carl's Carousel. He passed a year ago, two years ago, I think now, of cancer. Everything independent, bro. These are real people. These are real people. My boy did the photography. This is a real poker table. It calls carousel. I did everything myself. Uh, well, I hired everything, every, all the money out. And uh, that's, that's, that's what we did, man. So what platform? Like, is well, there a platform? Well, I'm, I'm, well, Amazon is the biggest platform. Okay, so yeah. Amazon. So I uploaded it to Amazon, and Amazon has a, a, a great service, uh, the, the Kindle service, a K, KDP, KDP service. Mm-hmm. They'll walk you through how to upload your book, how to get that book out there. And then, man, honestly, if I could, I would cut out Amazon, <laughs> the middleman, because they do take a percentage, not a huge percentage, but they do take a percentage. But their reach is so long. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I said, man, I got people in Africa, Europe, UK, Sweden. That's the Amazon, but bro. See, that's, they distribute it everywhere. And, and I think too, that's that's the importance of independent. Right. You can choose to fuck with Amazon. Or you not. can choose or not. Or yeah. you can choose to fuck with. But I still own it. You yeah. still that's the own only thing it. though. Yeah. I own it. Yeah. So they don't own my book. And I could pull my book from them anytime. Right. Yeah, at any time. There's no contract. Right. So I could pull my book from them anytime. So is it a certain number that you out there? Can Amazon come to you today and say, hey, Stacy, man, you have a great book. You have a, a great message. I want to offer you some $10 million. Is this book for sale? I don't know, man. That's a great question. I don't know. I don't know what that number is. Because my mind, the way my mind thinks, how Master P mind thinks. If, if you, you offer, offer me, me- 10 this motherfucker gotta be worth goddamn me. That's how my mind, how Master uh, yeah. P thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I man. don't know. I don't know the number, but I can't say I wouldn't do. But it's gonna be hard with this book. That's because you said, like I say, this is my baby. Yeah. Now I can't go and say that with the other books. But so <laughs> since, since we are here mm-hmm. and we talking as men, right? That's something you should work on, mm-hmm. knowing that number. Every last one of us in here. Mm-hmm should know that number because it's a number for everybody in the world. What's your number? But if you don't know that number, you don't know what you, whatever your number is, figure out what your number is because everything has a number on it. Right. This is a word of mathematics. Numbers. Yeah. yeah. So just figure out your number. And that goes for the people that's looking. Right. Right. The you people know, that's know, know yeah. your number. Hey man, you got me thinking. You got me thinking. I never really thought about it uh, because, like I say, I'm emotionally tied to this. Mm -hmm. So I never thought about selling the rights to it. Uh, But you're right. So you got me thinking, bro. You got me thinking. Because because with your number, this is on paper. Yeah. The world is going to read it. Right. I'm going to get paid off of my life. Right. I put it on a book. Right. But it never leave here. Yeah. So I get sixteen million for something that's in my heart, yeah. something that's in my life, and yeah. everybody else gonna enjoy it. Yeah, but it would, it. It, it would definitely have to be the right package, though, <laughs> because I would definitely it would definitely have to keep my name on it and my family, my legacy. Oh, when yes. I pass, would definitely have to get royalties to have a percentage. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So there is a number, but it have to be the package is more important. Than that. Yeah, respect. Yeah, yeah. You gotta keep keep eating off this thing. Yeah, oh, no yeah. doubt. No don't doubt. don't just. My thing is, I um, I love DJ Khaled approach. Mm-hmm. This man, marketing this, genius. This man say, listen, how DJ Khaled able to put out an album? He don't sell beats. He's a connector. Mm. This motherfucker, he, he <laughs> create royalty deals with the artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You on this song, we're going to split these royalties however. You know what I'm saying? That way we always going to keep eating. But the thing is, this nigga do shit from his heart. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Do shit from your heart. Make timeless. Whatever you doing, make that shit timeless. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
Right. I don't own the rights to it, but God did. God did. <laughs> <laughs> shit timeless, man. Own the rights to it. Right. Right. That shit timeless, right. man. And once it's timeless, yeah. And, and, and your heart and soul is into it, man. It'll never die. Right. It'll right. never right. die. You know what I'm saying? So, toast right. to the man. And toast to the man, brothers. Man, I hope toast it was. Man. Hey, gems man. drop, man. Pre- yeah, man. I appreciate uh, y'all, man. Any more, if, if they need any more questions, any more information on the book. Uh, do you got like mentoring program? Do you definitely, like, do definitely, you, do you, bro. you know what I'm saying? So how how do we how do how do we reach you? You can hit me up on a toast to the men at gmail dot com. Hit me up on Instagram, Booker the Writer. Hit me on YouTube, uh, uh, Toast to the Men Network. I'm on Twitter, a Toast to the Men Network. Uh, Facebook, SD Booker. I'm out there, y'all. I'm okay. out there, man. So yeah, y'all heard it here first from the man S. D. Booker. Yeah. Hey, this man got some gems. I hadn't myself read the book, but I can just hear from the passion of his voice, the goose bumps that came up on my arms when I heard him talk about his son. This man has something to talk about, and I want everybody to go out and purchase a toast to the man. Just because it says to the man. Women, y'all can read it too. Y'all go through things too. Y'all heard it from your boy first. SD Booker. It's go time. Go time. All right, man. We out. It's go time, baby. You know we're about, man. We're here to motivate, inspire you. God damn it. Do your thing. Live your true self. You know what I'm saying? Fuck the rest. Fuck the world. Hey. Be yourself, man. Be yourself, Ooh, man. Yeah. It's about, what did it say, man? They say it ain't where you're from. It's how you come. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yes, Church. Church. <laughs> <laughs> Be yourself, man. We yeah. out. We out. Yeah. Ooh.